Yeah. Um, question here. So is Kundalini, Pranayama, Tachyon, Chi, is all of that the same thing as the Holy Spirit? Do you okay. believe that? The... That's a good, that's a good, very good question. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to answer that question because uh, a lot of people uh, misunderstand me. I do talk about that and I want to explain that. You see, <laughs> the Bible in Romans 8 and Romans 9 talks about you have a spirit. Your spirit witnesses with his spirit. Okay, that means that there is we a lot in the Christian concept. We talk about the Holy Spirit, but we don't talk about every man has a spirit. A Buddhist has a spirit, a Hindu has a spirit, a Muslim has a spirit that God has given. Okay, that spirit is in, has infinite potential. That spirit, that spirit needs to reconcile back with the one who, who breathed into them and gave that spirit. Now, so all these things that you're talking of right now, okay, is coming from man's spirit. Okay, so you can have when 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 the when the Hindus will talk of uh, uh, prana, they are literally talking about a, the spiritual energy that they have. That is not demonic. That is his spirit, and he talks about it as prana. Uh, the Chinese will talk of chi, and you see them having chi power. Okay, raising Man. it up through the chakras and through the gonads and things like that. Yes, I mean if they if, if they want to do it like that, great. Okay, but it's uh, their I, I spirit. Yeah, it is their spirit. It is their spirit, and they are tapping into their spirit. Every man has their spirit. Okay, so once you understand that, that is their spirit. I mean, uh, the Chinese have chi, and and believe me, the Bible says that if we say unto a mountain, "Be thou removed and cast into the sea," it should be removed. So why aren't we doing more of that? And they can do it just with their spirit that God has given them. I mean, so what what are we doing? We, we can't demonize that. We need to say, hey, they're having a power through their spirit. Okay, that's great. How do I do that? I'm going to get to know the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is going to teach me. And hey, guess what? You know what? I, I, I like to go sit with this chi master uh, and or this, yo yo this yoga teacher and uh, talk to him about it. Why can't we have a philosophical discussion? You told me something very interesting in the beginning. You told me that people think that you are new age because you have discussions. Now, we in the East are, are not like the Western church. We can have a philosophical discussion with a Hindu, with a Muslim, with, I sit with meditators. You know, meditation is in the Bible. I meditate day and night. I meditate all the time. Today, I would have, I mean, I love to meditate. Okay, <laughs> It's in the Bible. It's a, it's a biblical word. Now, but they meditate as well. Okay. Now, I don't have Christian friends who really know anything about meditation. But I have Buddhist friends who know about my meditation, but they meditate as well. So I go and cross-reference my notes with them. <laughs> yeah. They, they, because if you go to learn maths, you go to a mathematician. You go to learn computers, you go to a computer. You, you, learn, you go learn, learn meditation, you go to a guy who meditates. Now, there's nothing wrong because the protocol is the same. But you know Jesus. So you're not going to end up worshipping some, uh, 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 some other god. Come on, Christians, wake up. You know, you, you, you know Jesus. So, but asking a guy who's a computer engineer about computers isn't demonic. Asking a rock star about playing lead guitar is not demonic. Asking a meditator how to meditate is not demonic. Because Christians don't know, but I mean, I, 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 I do teachings on meditation. You know, that's, yeah, that's it's good. phenomenal. People yeah, can't prophesy yeah. because they don't meditate. I've always, I've always taught that it was the same thing. I mean, you can get in the energy, you can feel it, right? Um, as far as like the Kundalini, I got, I've done yoga, right? And, and felt the Holy Spirit, right? And connecting with the Father. It was beautiful, right? Um, and I've always kind of taught that they were, there was the same thing. Someone said that there's a difference because the, the Kundalini comes from within you and the Holy yeah. Spirit comes from above. It is the power essence of God from above. Would you, is that a good way to explain it? That's a very, very nice, uh, I, uh, that's, that's a very good place, okay? Because um, I, 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 the Bible says that the spirit will, what is going to happen is it's going to spring up from inside of you and become a fountain like this. Yeah. Like, you know, that, that shape, okay? So every time you come to Jesus in New Testament, what John the Baptist saw was that the spirit came upon him and stayed on him. So my concept of the spirit is actually soul in the middle, Outside the soul is body and spirit is around. Now, the normal Christian concept is spirit is inside, then soul, then body. So for me, spirit is 
all around me because now I know Jesus and I you know, found it it's spring up around me. Okay, then my body, my body has receptors, and my body already knows to work with spirit. You don't have to teach the body to know work. It's already working with spirit. That's why we are alive. That's why we can move. It's because at the, at the bottom of it, it's not thought but spirit. Okay, so and then the 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 soul is transformed because of the biology can program the soul. Okay, the, the the what you do with your body programs the soul. So so it's the other way around. So I do believe that the spirit comes upon us when you know Jesus. So what is that energy that you're getting when you're doing yoga or when someone is doing that? That is your spirit. That is your spirit that you have. But it's not the power that comes from God that comes externally upon you. You wouldn't, uh, it, you, would you liken that at all to, you know, in, in Joel, the Lord said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Yeah. There seems to be some similarities that they have uh, a portion of God pouring out his spirit all over the earth and they've kind of cultivated it, put different names on it, Kundalini, Pranayama, yeah. things like that. You don't think that yes. that's uh, a I, good I, teaching? Uh, I, I won't. I, I would think that in the Eastern practices, because, you know, we have we have some of the best yoga teachers at our church as well. Uh, all, 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 all types of yoga all, uh, from the chakras. So we have a, a whole lot of yoga teachers back home. We are in Sri Lanka, right? So, uh, but they're all believers, you know, talk, tongue-talking Christians, you know. Uh, but, but the fact of the matter is that uh, there's something missing. Let's put it like that. And uh, that is yeah. the, the pairing with, you know, what is missing? What is missing with all that is intimacy. If you nail it, it's intimacy. Hey, they, that's hey, that's not hold on. That, that's missing from a lot of churches too now. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Spirit <laughs> churches, you know, intimacy <laughs> by yourself going in, you know. So what they have is the mechanics, but um, what they're missing is intimacy, and and I, I don't know what I'll do without intimacy. I'm with you. What about people who are tapping into that? I say putting the cart before the horse, but they've they've kind of entered in th through everything that you're talking about, the teachings, they resonate with it, love, being transformed, but they haven't heard this gospel this way, right? As far as like, they've those who are doing it through Hinduism, those who are doing it through New Age, those who are doing it through the occult and just say, okay, Jesus was just another teacher. He had some great concepts, but you don't need Jesus, you can get in and do this by other means. What would you say to those people? Yeah, so simply, I'll tell you, uh, it, it's a very simple thing because justice means you can see every Hindu, I'm, I'm, I deal with Hindus all the time, I deal with Buddhist people all the time. The problem is it's a karmic cycle. So karma means you, you have a concept of you sow, you reap, you sow, you reap, you sow, you reap. So finally, if you sow into the flesh, guess what? You're going to reap of the flesh. So now God sees that you owe so many people. So unless, but you know, so, so generally in, in India and places like that, if someone gets sick, they'll say, oh, it's karma. Well, why is this guy sick? In, in, some, in some context, it's like, even why do they need to go to the hospital? Oh, he, they're supposed to die because it's karma. Yeah. But it's, you come to that position in your life like, oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm sick. <laughs> okay. Then you say, yes. You know what? Because you're sick because that's justice. And we got to accept it. Okay? So do you, do you like justice? Yeah. That's why you're going to die because it's justice that you die because of all the mistakes that you made. Okay? Now, you present. But you know what? God loves justice so much. Even if you die, do you know that it won't pay your debt off? The mistakes that you've done, buddy. Okay. <laughs> too great. <laughs> okay. Too great. Okay. You dying. Okay. You don't have to die. You might have to suffer and die. You might have to suffer long and die. That's a good. Okay. To pay for what you've done. I don't know. I'm only talking about myself. I'm not yeah. talking about anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. I know, my, I know the mistakes I made. Right. So then you say, oh God, please. Is there another way? And he says, yes, I will come and pay them off. If you pray that they get paid, but you have to expect them to get blessed. Your enemies get blessed. And then you see throughout the Bible, you see that uh, God looks at Israel and says, I am strengthening your, I'm, I'm, he says, I'm weakening your enemies, not because of your righteousness, not because of your goodness, okay, but because of their wickedness. You see, he's constantly compensating. As your enemies become wicked, he compensates you, not because of your goodness, 
but because he's a compensating God. He accounts it for righteousness constantly. And he sees your enemy's wickedness and then he starts compensating you. I'm a beneficiary of my enemy's wickedness all my life. The churches here have tried to kill me, man. The last season, you know, they, 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 they did crazy stuff to me. I, you know, they, they put it in the paper. They uh, raided our, uh, some of our, got the police. With the, there was a government uh, previously that had certain ministers, senators who were involved in actually raiding our, uh, uh, some, some of our workplaces and, you know, doing really wicked things, taking my, uh, my companies, my business away and doing all kinds of things, you know, with senators, the Christians got together with these guys to do it. <laughs> the Christians you know? doing it. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast segment, be sure to listen to the entire episode by clicking the video to your right. Also, we are on iTunes. You can download the MP3 versions as well. Be sure to subscribe for future episodes.